Hello and welcome to DirectX 11 Tutorial 3. In this tutorial we are going to focus on creating our render window class. So first let's go and add a new header. We are going to call this header render window. Now the first thing we will do is include our error logger header. For our render window class we're going to have an initialize function which will take in uh, parms that we need to create the window. For these parms we're going to need a handle to our applications instance. We're going to need a window title. We're going to need the window class name. So when we create a window we have to assign a class name to it and we have to register that class and it's just how the Windows API works and they need to have different class names. And then we also need to assign a width and a height. We also have our process messages function. Now process messages, the way we will have it working is it will be reading all the messages that get sent to the window such as if you press down a key or if you move your mouse. These messages will then be dispatched to another uh, function where we will handle them. If the process messages function returns false, that will indicate that the window has been closed. If it returns true, that means to keep going through the process message loop. We will get more into this in the next tutorial. Then we have our render window destructor. This function is just for registering the window class and it's private because our initialize function will call it. This is where we will store the handle to our window. When we create the window, we will receive the handle back. If we receive back null, then that means the window failed to create. So we will just initialize it to null. This is where we are storing a handle to the instance. And then this is just we are storing the window title, we are storing the wide string version of the window title, and then window class, wide string representation, and then the width and height. So let's go ahead and get into the CPP for this. So let's go to create a new source file. We are going to call this renderWindow.cpp. So let's include our header. Okay, and first let's start on our initialize function. So we are just setting our class members here. That should be self-explanatory. And for the wide strings, we are calling our string converter string to wide function just to convert them. And then we are going to first call the register window class function. So I guess next let's take a look at the register window class. So in order to register our window class, we need to make a window class variable. And in this case, we are using window class ex because it's the extended version of it. We need to set our window style for when it will redraw and so forth. We need to set a pointer to the, win the function for the windows processing for when we're processing the messages. Now, we are not going to do this in this tutorial. We're going to do it in the next one. So for now, we are setting it to the default window processing message uh, handler. This is, um, we're not going to use these, it's just allocating extra, extra bytes after the window class structure. And since this is the handle to our instance, we are not going to use any icons, but if you were, this is where you would pass in the handle to the class icon and then the handle to the small icon. For our cursor we are just going to be using the default arrow cursor. We are not going to be setting a background brush or a menu name. For our class name this is where we reference that wide string version of our class name. And then for the size you just have to pass in uh, the size of the struct and this is just because you could use wind class or you could use wind class extended. 
The last thing we do is we just need to register our class. So now with that set up, our class has been registered and we are ready to create our window. So when we are creating our window, we're going to use the extended version of create window. And create window will return the handle. So if the window is not successfully created, it will return null. And that's how we will know if the window was created successfully or not. The first argument is the extended window style. And we're just going to be using the default for now. The next argument is the window class name that we would passed in. Then we have the window title, and they're, they're the wide string versions. Next we have the normal window style. We're probably going to cover a few of these towards the end of this tutorial, which is showing what they look like. Then we have the windows X position, the Y position, the window width, the window height, we don't have a parent for this window, so we're just going to pass in null. And we might change this later for the render window to take in uh, a handle to the parent in case there is a parent, because we might want to render more than one window. A handle to the menu, I'm not going to be using any menu, so that'll be null. And for the handle to the instance, that has to be passed in. And this is the last argument is a parameter that you can pass to the create window. So currently, we are not using this, but in the future, we will probably be passing in um, a pointer to the class that will have the messages routed to it. So I wouldn't worry about that right now. It might sound a bit confusing, but it, it should make more sense when we actually do it. But for now, that is null. So now we just need to make sure that our window was successfully created. So we check that handle if it is equal to null. And if it is, then we are going to log the error. Now, you'll notice that this function returns a handle to the window. A lot of the functions that we use will return h results, which is how we will check what the error was. But for some reason, create window actually returns a handle to the window, and if you want to get the H result, you have to call get last error. So that is why when we are calling log, we are passing in get last error for the first argument. The last thing we need to do right here is to bring the window up on the screen. We call show window, and we pass in the window's handle. For the flag, we pass in show window. We set it as the foreground window, so it will be visible above everything and then we just set it as our focus. And we are going to change this to return true. Next, before we test this, let's add in our destructor. And the way our destructor will work is if our handle is not null, so if we have an, a created window is active, we are going to unregister the class and then we are going to destroy the window. So let's go back to our source.cpp we're going to change from including air logger to including render window. We're going to create our render window object. We're going to initialize it. And we have to pass in our handle to our instance, which gets passed into this application. Our window title, let's call it title, my window class. We'll do 800 by 600. So if I run this, you'll see we had a window pop up really quick and then it closed. So let's say that we, we don't want it to close. We could add in a loop right here. And just you know put in a sleep during a loop just so it stays open. And you'll notice that we have this uh, waiting icon for our cursor, and we can't drag the window, we can't use any of the buttons or anything. So the reason that this is, is because we aren't capturing the messages that get sent to the window and dispatching them. So let's go back to our render window header. When we had created this class, we had created a process messages function. 
Now process messages will capture all of the messages that go to the window and they will dispatch them to the Windows process uh, Windows processing function. Now we when we had created the window class, let's go to our window class. We had chosen the default Windows proc for our uh, Windows proc function and for now we are going to keep that. So all that we have to do is create our process messaging function and call that in a loop. All right, so let's go ahead and create our process messages function. Now the way this will work is we will create a, uh, a message to store the next message. We're going to zero the memory out on it. We're going to call peak message. Now there's peak message and get message. We are using peak message because it is not blocking. If we use get message, it will stop here and wait until we actually receive a message before it goes on to the next code. So for peak message, the first thing we pass in is a, the address of our message where we want to store it. The next argument is our handle to our window that we are checking on. If you just want to check for all messages, I believe you can pass in null here instead of the handle to the window. And then you can filter out certain for certain messages. We're not going to be doing any filtering, so we're just leaving the min and max as zero. And the last is how you want to handle that message after you've read it. So we want to remove it. We don't want to process the same message twice. The last thing is we are translating the message and dispatching it. Now dispatching, this should be uh, pretty obvious, it is actually sending the message out to our default Windows uh, processing function. However, translating, what this does is there are there's a window event for if you press a key down, and there's also a window event for if you press a character. So if you're not translating, then the character messages won't be dispatched. So for example, if I if I press W, I would get a key down message for pressing W. And then when I release W, I would get a key up message. If I am translating and dispatching, then I'll press W, I'll get the key down, and I'll also get the char. So it actually looks like this. And then when I release W, I'll get the key up. So this is useful for handling single presses for like uh, for chat and stuff. The reason that you wouldn't want to just read key down is because if I press down W and I hold it, I will keep getting a bunch of key downs. So that is why that is why the char car, I don't know how you say that, but that is why that Windows message is useful. Next, after we have read the message, we want to check if the window was closed. Now, normally, if you only had one window for your application, you could look for the quit message. Because in your Windows processing loop, you would post a quit message, but we're not going to be doing that because what if you want to have more than one window? I think it'd be better just to design this in advance to be able to handle more than one window. So once that window is closed, we'll be getting null messages when we try to do peak message. However, that might happen even if the window is not closed. So what we need to do is check if that handle is a window. So we're calling isWindow and passing in the handle. And if it is not, then we are going to reassign our handle to null since the window's been destroyed. We are going to unregister the class and we are going to return false. Now, in our destructor, if you remember, we had destroyed the window and up here we didn't. The reason is because the default windows process uh, function will actually call destroy window when you close it. So we don't have to do that here. And when we create our Windows processing function, we will also call destroy window when they close the window. 
So let's go back to our source CPP and we are going to modify our loop. So instead of just always looping, we are going to loop as long as process messages returns true. Because in process messages, we return false when the window is destroyed and we return true when the window still exists. So now let's test our program. All right, and we are able to drag it around, minimize it, and when we reopen it, it's black, but don't worry about that for now, and we can exit out of it. I was going to finish this tutorial by going over the Windows styles, but I decided to instead have a video after this, which will just review the different Windows styles and we are also going to review something regarding um, the rectangle that we are using to create our window width and height and the X position and Y position. There is an issue with how we are doing it right now, and I'm just going to show that in the next demonstration. So that's all we're going to cover for now, and thanks for watching.